Hello, everybody. And for actual, literally, seriously this time, welcome to the Super Bonus Rounds. We're back with the final episode of Spyro Reunited Trilogy with Rainbow Zero 767. We've officially come full circle. There it is. And you stop yelling at me! Okay, so let's go hop in. I would like to one last time apologize to Rich for losing the footage of that first bonus episode because I did not know I did not fully complete the first Spyro. Chad, oh no. you had a bullet. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> for the last time for this trilogy, I had to nail that. <laughs> for this trilogy of... <laughs> oh, but don't worry. The mullet is not going away. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that'll bring... When Far Cry comes back, I'm sure I'll hear more of it. Oh, you betcha. <laughs> So this will be the longer of the uh, bonus episodes, unfortunately. But it's mostly gem collecting, one stupid ass ski race, and another boss fight. But holy shit, I must be really tired because I thought fucking Bianca was standing on stilts. Holy shit! Holy yeah, it's like one in the morning, and I have a morning shift, and I'm I'm an idiot for recording this late. But we, it's that or live another day knowing that we never finished Spyro. Yeah. Rush after how long it's taken. Yeah, like I, I, I would feel worse if, like, after that we just gave up. No, I, that's not who I am. That's not what we're about. Unless it was physically impossible to do it, I would n never. No. So when we left off, we were still talking about E3. We kind of jumped around, uh, talking about Xbox, uh, Call of Duty, uh, Ubisoft, Nintendo. God, what else? I talked a lot about the Nintendo stuff, because, like, the Nintendo conference was my favorite one. Oh, but there's one we did not talk about. The Square Enix conference. The one that oh. replaced the, uh... Yeah, they had a big one, because, uh, Sony dropped out, so they have one of their own. And it started off strong, and I mean really strong. And then it kind of tipped off after a while. Like, because they opened hard on that Final Fantasy VII Remake reveal. Oh, on the Seven Remake? Yes. The one that we've been waiting for for fucking ever. And we're gonna finally get. We have a release date for it already. What is the release date? March 5th of next year. Okay, that's that's fine. But they're still gonna split it into episodic parts, so I'm convinced that... I think me and the fan base of Final Fantasy VII are convinced that... This uh, release that's coming out in March is a going to be like a 60 hour expansion of the entire Midgard chapter, which in the grand scheme of things in Final Fantasy VII is about like five or six hours. I feel like they're gonna blow the fucking lid off and have it be this big experience that's been got more side quests, you explore more of Midgard, so on and so forth. Based on what they've shown, that's what it looks like is gonna happen. And, and it's honestly, gonna... I'd be more inclined to play that. Yeah, and the the best way I can describe the gameplay from what they showed off was, what if Final Fantasy XV was good? <laughs> yeah, so, was. yeah, there's still an ATB meter, but it's not turn-based anymore. It's now third-person action. And you can swap nice. between characters. Nice. So you can swap between Barrett, Cloud, Tifa, and... Aerith, and... I, yeah, since it's only gonna be a Midgar, I guess Red 13 will come in there too, but I think he'll come up at the end. It depends on how they play this out, but I'm convinced that this is beginning of the game, the bombing mission to leaving Midgar, and then episode two or three or whatever is like from Calm on to Nibelheim and stuff like that, yada yada yada. But the March 5th game is definitely gonna be the Midgar chapter because holy shit, if you saw that demo, like, do you remember the big scorpion robot you fight in the beginning? Where it's like a big yeah. nothing, and you forgot all about yeah. it. They went balls to the fucking wall making that fight epic. Nice. Like, they pulled all the goddamn stops. I'm like, and this is... I, I kept saying to Christine when we were watching, I said, Christine, this is the first boss of the game. 
She's like, what? Really? I'm like, yeah, they just made it a lot more epic than it actually is. Like, this is that stupid scorpion that just kind of stands there and pokes you with the tail. It does a hell of a lot more than that now. So, there's one that we haven't mentioned that I'm kind of curious about. Uh -huh. Did EA do anything? Other than fu Here's how much EA knows people hate them. Their live stream was pre-recorded. <laughs> <laughs> so that way they couldn't get any booze or whatever. <laughs> they did, did something they... for Star Wars Fallen Jedi Order. No one cares because it's EA. Um, beyond Anything that, Battlefield? I don't think so. They just focused on okay. Star Wars, a little bit on Apex, and... Ew, I don't ew. know. I really don't know. Okay. I'm just making sure because, again, there's only two titles that I hold a very tiny sliver of a shred out for. That's, again, Need for Speed, anything Need for Speed related, and anything uh, Battlefield related. Reason being... Yeah, I don't think they talked about Battlefield whatsoever. Yeah, because, well... Well, last year they released five, so it's that's still kind of going on right now. But uh, five was, um, and again, here's another reason why EA is just really fucked. So we went from Battlefield three and four, which were f fucking fantastic. I mean, fantastic, like. The fact that, oh, I can take a helicopter, I can take a tank, I can take whatever, ram it into a fucking building, and make it collapse. You know, like, real warfare. Yeah, that's what made those games perfect. And they're still playable. But, then we did something completely opposite. We came out with Battlefield 1... Right after four, and it takes place during World War One. Mm. Now, now, that is a really interesting take because there hasn't really been a World War One style game, ever. not really. So that was a really interesting take on that, especially. When you go to the Ottoman Empire to stop them from making their advance on the growing conflict in Europe um, and everything else, so they paid attention to detail. And um, that was great, but it was also a flop at the same time. So then, here's what we do then. We go from that to Battlefield 5, and now we're in World War 2. Like, every major first-person shooter has covered already. Well, this this one covered a different set of events that was that you know that wasn't really foretold by you know the major you know franchise titles. So, like, the main character in the campaign is a woman. So, and that, that's, that was kind of cool. What's that? that? It ended up set the incels. So, um... Yeah, but, um... I still hold out just a little bit for Battlefield and Need for Speed. Those are the only two titles I respect. But other than that, everything else they've fucking done. Like honestly, I I think EA Sports should just shut, should just shut down because that's, ne that's never going to happen. Let's be real. Well, other than other than FIFA, which is still popular, especially in the foreign countries as well. But Madden, like EA Sports Madden. Shouldn't be, shouldn't exist. Uh, you know, because obviously that's that's dying breed there. 
Yeah, um, John Madden's not even in the money anymore. I don't think it's just his name now. Right, it's just the name, but at the same time, um, EA Sports has never been able to pin pin accuracy right on on Madden on the Madden football games because it, they just couldn't. So, and that was one of their major juggernaut uh, sub sub like uh, launch. You know, a brand. You know, it's like, oh, you had EA Games focusing on the non sports types, and then you had EA Sports focusing on the sports games. So, but now it's just like, yeah. Um, because honestly, I don't think, other than the stupid, the stupid people who are, try, who are, who are die hard, you know, try hard diehards, I call them. I call them the try-hard diehards because they will go after any game that you can do shooty shooty bangy bangy explodey explodey. So, or as like uh, Aaron from Game Grumps likes to call it, call it to do shoot a man. That's what I call it. <laughs> um, call it to do shoot a yeah, man. So, that's, what I, that's what I call it for games now. So like for example, the fact that people still fucking play Star Wars Battlefront 2 is just insane. Um, so, those are the people that would be like, Yeah, I'm playing shooters, bro. I'm going to play them. Because, you know, shooty, shooty, uh, throwy, throwy, bangy, bangy, explodey, explodey. Because it really speaks to my mushy brain of fuckboy status. So... <laughs> Jesus Christ, uh, spill in the tea! <laughs> so, it, it... Like, those are the type of gamers that will play any shooter game no matter what. Just because it's a shooter, things go, things explode, go boom, and um, you know, and you can shoot shit. Because oh, that's right, that's right. Um, you're either a not legal enough, or b would not pass a background check to own a legitimate firearm and go to a sports range where you can actually do that legally and safely. You know, like, like people common sense do that. Oh, that's right. Oh, then that means, oh, those games are, are um, co are common are protectors for people with common sense. Who? Because it distracts the people that don't have common sense. Yes, I figured it out. I figured it out. For people that don't have common sense, that should not. Be handling a firearm or anything dangerous whatsoever. They yeah, don't have it's common for them. sense. It's for that's what those shooters are for. That's what shooter games are for. You're not allowed to have a gun because you'd probably kill yourself and your family. Have this instead. Yeah, here, here's a game. Here's a game so you can do that instead. So, oh, oh, uh, I figured it out. I've achieved total enlightenment. Yeah, My that, that Carl Sagan plane. gif of his, him going mind blown and then the Big Bang happens, that was just you yes. now. Yes. Yes. Uh, it protects us people with common sense. Oh, yes. Yes. I'm so happy I've achieved enlightenment. Oh, my God. Yes. Because well, we're about to bring your mood down because there is some unfortunate bad news about uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake that's going to really steam you. That is. Are you ready for it? Maybe. They recasted every character. Uh, New, because well, because like mm. you were adamant about how much you love Steve Burton as Cloud, so he's not coming back. Well, again, probably because he has either a, because he either has other projects going on, because the reason I knew this is because he has almost. Um, I think it hasn't been confirmed yet, but he's possibly talking about full-time status on returning to General Hospital, the popular ABC daytime soap. Oh, That's actually, been going on, for like on the, the contrary, last... I read that his character... I don't watch the show, but I read a news article that I was looking up about it, see if he said anything about being recast. He hasn't. Um, his character, I think, was killed off. Oh, um, okay, well... So then I don't know what he's up to. But what made well, me really has... sad was for the longest time on his Twitter profile, he said, "It's it said in his Twitter bio, it said voice of Cloud Strife," 
After E3, he removed it. Oh. But they recasted everybody, not just him, so they're not well, sticking it to him. They're probably... They're either... They're just either doing it to for a change in direction, or B... Um... Again, they just can't afford... Can't afford them. I, I think it could be a mixture of both, because like they recasted everybody, not just uh, Cloud. Sephiroth has a new voice. Tifa has a new voice. Uh, well, yeah, and also, I, I kind of... Sephiroth definitely I has a new go one. Back to, I kind of go back to this theory of... The times are changing, okay? Like, there are things that are being revived from 20 years ago that um that are getting a whole new facelift etc etc so honestly we know it's paving way to a newer generation kind of like how it was for us it's paving way for a newer generation so yeah it's, it, it's gonna you're gonna have to have some type of revamp from the ground up to pave way for that in terms, you know, but, um... So... Oh, you know, it's sad? Sure. But... The more I think about it... Because, you know, the same people... That have been talking about, oh... Why can't they recast the original people... Of these live-action remakes, or... Why can't we make any similarities to the original? Well, because, again, it's not for us. It's for the new generation. Just yep. like the animated films were for our, our, our generation, the live actions are for the newer generation. So that they have their own experience, kind of like how we developed ours. You know, mm. it, you can't... Like, honestly, if you think about it, do you really want something to be brought back... Only to have a similar, if not the exact same experience like you did years ago. Not, like, I would rather something stay dead than uh, get a well, shitty or, or better, or better, Or better put this way, would you rather have something so iconic to you in the past stay there as a, as a good memory Knowing that, yeah, that was something that you accomplished, something that you achieved, something you experienced, and be introduced to a new concept in a new in a new era, so that you can have that whole that developing that whole new experience again in a different manner. I'd rather I'd rather have new experiences, honestly. That's yeah. Life. So, yeah. So that's where. I can see that applying to that, where it's like, yeah, you know what? Final Fantasy VII came out tw over 20 years ago, and it was a lot different back then. No, it, also did, it also didn't have voice acting. Right, so times have evolved. Times have evolved. It's just a shame, <sighs> though, because, like, I, I, I was know, disappointed I know. because... Steve Burton has been playing Cloud and things that are not the Final Fantasy VII story. So I was like kind of excited, like, oh man, if they ever remake Final Fantasy VII for realsies, maybe we'll get the heat. No. Maybe he'll finally get his perspective on like how Cloud actually is as a character. It's just a shame. Like, I'm not stark raving mad, like, oh, I'll recast him. No, I'm just like, it's just a bum. It's just a bummer. Yeah, and you know, like I said, I, it doesn't take the credit away from Steve Burton. It doesn't take the credit away, the fact that, yeah, here are the games that he was in. So, yeah, it, it, and the fact that people can still tie that to him because of those past experiences, then, then that, that, and again, that memory, it never goes away. So, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's kind of like, yeah, it's kind of like something died, but it's like it's okay. You'll get through it. It's gonna it's gonna be a bummer. It's gonna suck, but you'll get through it. 
Why you know, to, well, I, I think I'm fine with the. You know what? The guy who voices Cloud now, he actually, I actually thought it was Steve Bergen when I listened to it. So he had me fooled. So. Well, or well, here's the thing. They've been working on Final Fantasy VII for like what, the last two, three years now. Well, we no, the remake was like confirmed like lo a lot longer ago than that. Like the last time we saw anything of it was in 2015, when Steve Burton was still Cloud in the trailer. But now they re-revealed it, he's not him anymore. Hmm. So I think maybe maybe they couldn't afford him. Maybe they could afford him for that trailer, but not for the main game. And like, or let's be real, Final Fantasy VII is fucking huge. And or. Because Steve Burton also has his own band. He has his own Perhaps. band. So, no, he does. He has his own band. It's no, I mean, I mean like, because here's the other thing. If it was just Steve Burton, then yeah, you'd have the other cast members still there. But no, I think it's just they wanted to go with a the cast they could afford. And again, uh, let me to reiterate. If he had side projects going on, like touring with his band or was doing uh, or was getting ready for other things role wise that would divert his attention mm -hmm. but yeah I, I, I am actually familiar with uh, the person they cast to play Jesse so I'm actually very very thrilled for her are you familiar with an, a voice actress by the name of Erica Lindbeck Richie, you still there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you familiar with uh, Erica Limbeck? Mm, not really. Okay, well, I am. She voices Futaba in uh, um, Persona 5. Gosh, she's been in a lot of things lately, but she's Jesse, one of the girls from uh, Avalanche, the you know, the group from the very beginning of the game. I don't know if yeah. you remember them all that well. Well, not, not really, but a little bit. And now we got our final cutscene, which is like really not worth it. Cute, but like, eh. <laughs> oh, come on, that that's adorable. Yeah, that's adorable. Oh my god, that's fucking adorable. So yeah, of course I'm I'm gonna enjoy this cutscene. Yes! Fucking love it! Alright, well at least you got something out of it. So now for realsies, Spyro Reignited Trilogy is over. <laughs> Whew. Man, it took us like half a year to do it. <laughs> Alright, so... Thank you guys so much for joining on this 45-46 on this, uh, episode journey. It should not have taken this long, but we have life happens. <laughs> Shit happens too. Sometimes but we still persevere. Time. We still persevere, and we still deliver when we can. So, Sorry. you know, at least we at least we keep yeah. we, at least we stay committed to it. All right. So now we still have to uh, follow our new little rule we set for ourselves. We have to finish off our old playthroughs before we start anything new, unless you know, with exceptions. Uh, we, the now now uh, since we've uh, been finishing Spyro, all of the DLC episodes of Final Fantasy 15 are out, so we'll tackle those. But also, we're gonna go fucking ham on Red Dead Redemption until our, our oh, Halloween. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And then when Halloween rolls around, we'll bring Resident Evil 2 back, but not the version you saw the last time. Yeah, we actually got a little surprise in store for you guys. And then when that if comes you around. manage to get if you manage to do in portion recording again, we can also we can bring that back and also uh, <laughs> <the game>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so look forward to that. So thank you guys so much for watching. We will see Spyro when he drops for the Nitro Field. When, uh, when he actually actually John, John, John. Yeah. Actually let me let me put it this way. We will see Spyro when he decides to give his wings a rest 
and decides to hop in the driver's seat with four tires, an engine, a steering wheel, in Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel. Yeah, he's going to be part of a uh, season dedicated entirely to him. Uh, I think he's going to have his own track, and they're probably going to have more characters other than Spyro playable, like maybe Hunter or Laura. Let's have money bags be playable just so I can shoot him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then I'll just I'll just like I'll just go on like exhibition races and play exclusively as Spyro and shoot the living shit out of, out of money bags. <laughs> yeah. They'll probably give it to like Hunter, Alora, uh, Sergeant Bird, and all them. Money bags. Will no, be fun, well, though. don't be don't be surprised though because fun to destroy. They probably gotta keep up. They probably gotta keep up with the balance of. Uh, of good of good characters and evil characters. So. Oh my god! If money bags is protected by the Uka Uka power up, I will laugh my goddamn ass off. And, he's not a hero. And or if they if they add Ripto, if oh, Ripto is. Oh, I didn't think they should add Ripto. Because if you got Engine, if you got Doctor Engine, if you got Cortex, if you got, you know, uh, Nitrous Oxide, you got. You know, all those guys, you definitely should have Ripto because he would fit in with all of them. Yeah. And Cortex and Ripto did team up in that not good GBA game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll yeah. do a playthrough of that on the channel one day. I have it. John? Somewhere. John? John? What? That, that is just as bad. That is, you, that is just as bad. No. No. Maybe not you and I, but we have, we have a new member on our channel who is a glutton for bad games. So maybe with him. Good. You and him can do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thank you guys so much for watching our Spyro playthrough. We can finally put this to rest after six or seven months. Um, and we'll see you guys with uh, the return of the Final Fantasy VII DLC episodes and Red Dead Redemption. Once, uh, and one last time, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. See ya.